Okay, well, thank you, Wendy, and uh, there we go. Looks like I am now indeed the presenter. Fantastic. So welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, we've got a pretty good attendance today, which I suspect is because the uh, topic of uh, user stories is uh, one that uh, is pretty widely widespread. A lot of people use user stories, and I would guess that Many of you are like many other people. Uh, even though you're using them, you're not always comfortable with them, and they don't always uh, you don't always get them right. So um, let me just give one aside. Uh, I I live in uh, the Boston area, uh, which is for those of you who who aren't aware, it's the upper right hand corner. And uh, this is actually a prominent date or a prominent anniversary because this is the 40th anniversary of the blizzard of 78, which I lived through and uh, can attest to the fact that it was quite an event. Uh, it happens to be snowing right now, but I don't think it's going to uh, approach the blizzard depth. So, um, one other thing that I want to caution you about, some of the, um, apparently the technology that we're using does not support animations, and I use animations considerably in, uh, in some of my slides, so uh, if, if the flow seems a little strange, I apologize. It's because I didn't realize that the animations wouldn't work. So one of the things that we want to do is to uh, examine uh, why people have trouble with user stories in spite of or perhaps even because of their seeming simplicity. I'm going to make a distinction between what I call real business requirements, business deliverable what's that provide value when satisfied, uh, as opposed to product or feature requirements, which are ways how to satisfy the what's. And we want to give you a little bit of practice in using user stories to document real business requirements what. And that I think one of the main reasons why people have difficulty writing uh, user stories is that they're focusing on the format rather than the content. And when you don't have the content right, it's real hard to get the form uh, correctly. So hopefully these things are understandable. Uh, if uh, as, as we go forward, I'm going to be encouraging you to uh, uh, give some feedback. If you uh, do it in your chat window, if you would, uh, and um, you know, if anybody has any additional uh, uh, objectives or, or concerns about their user stories, uh, Please type them into the chat window. I'm not going to be able to respond to that immediately, but uh, you know we do want to capture that information. So I uh, I don't know about you, but but I I get real tired real quickly of buzzwords, and one of the one of the current ones is transformation. As a matter of fact, I presented this talk at a large conference not long ago uh, where the theme of the conference was transformation. And uh, I did a quick straw poll of the people in my session, and they all, almost all agreed that they were uh, considerably tired of hearing the word transformation, especially because people just keep repeating it, and oftentimes it, it's kind of meaningless. What I want you to realize is that Transformation typically refers to significant change. Okay. A lot of our projects are not transformative, even though the literature would make it sound that way. And uh, But getting the problem correct, the business deliverables that will reasonably solve the problem and provide needed value which is the role of right user stories, is in fact central to transformation, but also any other project. Okay. So one thing that we're going to be doing in this session is 
trying to have you folks do a lot of the work, actively identifying, writing, and evaluating user story content and format. Now, it's a risky approach. It's made more risky by some limitations of the presentation software, but hopefully uh, uh, we're going to be able to overcome those. Okay. But one of the big advantages of user stories is that they seem very simple. And the downside that is seldom recognized, at least in my experience, is that that supposed simplicity can actually create hidden complexities that end up tripping up project teams. And when they get tripped up, they tend not to recognize what's really happening, and therefore they tend not to address it appropriately. The other thing is that in my experience, and, and to to consider your own, but it seems to me that almost everything that is said about Agile, all the uh, presentations, the, the articles, uh, many of the books, are all about things like managing user stories in a backlog rather than getting the user story content correct in the first place. We're going to try to give you some guidance, some assistance in getting the content more accurate because in my experience, when the content is inaccurate, it doesn't matter how clearly you write it, it's still not going to be helpful to you. Okay. So uh, hopefully you will all be uh, willing to participate. Uh, we, With luck, we're going to get more participation than we're going to be able to acknowledge, and I apologize in advance for that. So I'm sure that many of you, perhaps all of you, are familiar with this general format that Mike Cohn introduced uh, for documenting user stories, and that in Agile, user stories are the vehicle for requirements. Now, there's a lot of verbiage and disagreement about exactly what you know what they are and are not, but user stories have something to do with requirements. And the typical format is as some kind of a user, I want or need something or another so that I can get some benefit. Okay? And this is, this is a pretty uh, uh, important and understandably uh, popular format because it's a three-liner. And you know, what, who could argue with three lines, especially if you've been accustomed to uh, uh, things more complex. So as I said, I'm going to be asking you, and I'm doing it right now, to do the bulk of the work here, and I'll try and capture a few of the things. Hi there. hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Maloudis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year, but if you use the coupon code learn to earn you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over 1,000 hours of on-demand career development, covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants, all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of the great IT professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.